हे गाइस आई होप यू ऑल वर लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड फॉर द सेकंड वीडियो ऑन क्रिस्टल फील्ड थ्योरी ओके इफ यू रिमेम्बर इन द लास्ट क्लास वी रेड स्प्लिटिंग ऑफ डी और बैटल इन ऑक्टेट्रल कॉम्प्लेक्सेस एंड आई एम हंड्रेड परसेंट श्योर दैट नाउ यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड स्प्लिटिंग इन टेक्ट्राइट्रल कॉम्प्लेक्सेस वेरी वेल ओके द कॉन्सेप्ट आर ऑलमोस्ट सिमिलर ओनली द फ्लो चार्ट विल वेरी अ बिट ओके सो नाउ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड दैट एंड लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट Now let's understand the splitting of d orbital in tetrahedral complexes. It is almost similar to that of the octahedral complexes when you talk about the concept, okay? But now when you talk about the splitting there is some difference. So let's start understanding it from the structure of the complex. Now if you talk about a tetrahedral complex then you have the central metal atom and in a regular tetrahedron you will have the position of your ligands. okay and in this case what happens in this case the ligands that from that is going to enter that dx y dy z and dy z that experience more repulsion compared to the ligands in the dx square minus y square and dz square that is the reason you can see that when the splitting occurs okay your dx square minus z square that is your eg orbitals will have less energy while your t to g orbitals will have more energy okay why because they are experiencing less repulsion compared to them which are experiencing more repulsion based on the orbital positions okay so that is what we understand from this again to start with how we say we will have initially the degenerate d orbitals all the 5 d orbitals have the same energy in absence of the ligands but as the ligands start approaching they will have electronic repulsion and due to this the energy of the system will rise okay which is nothing but this one okay the next when the electrons of the ligand start entering the d orbital now your d orbital which was degenerated now will generate that is will split into two okay that is you will have the eg right and you will have the t2g that is clear now always remember one thing when you have this t2g towards that side you will have the 60% energy barrier okay and the eg will have the 40% energy barrier okay that is reversal of your octahedral structure okay so when you were talking about the splitting in octahedral and splitting in tetrahedral it is vice versa like it is reversed okay in octahedral the t2g was down in tetrahedral the t2g is up okay similarly eg is down over here and in octahedral the eg was up okay towards eg you had this okay and towards t2g you had this okay so it is almost similar in terms of the energy okay what next now let's try to understand it with something else that is now we know that the difference between t2g and eg is going to be delta t okay or it is going to be 10 dq okay now who does not understand all these things i will attach the link okay for the splitting of octahedral of the d orbital in octahedral complexes do watch that out first and then come to this okay next now if you talk about t2g how we say it in terms of this now if the electron enters the d orbital okay it will decrease the stability okay by this okay i repeat it will decrease each electron entering will decrease the stability by this that is 0.4 delta t or 4 dq okay similarly the electron that is going to enter into eg is going to increase the stability by this number okay this is what you use for calculating the cfse that is crystal field stabilization energy so remember any electron that is going to enter here will increase the stability by this number or you can say 6 dq any electron that is going to enter t2g is going to decrease the stability by 4 dq or by this okay that is the importance of this number because it helps us in calculation of cfse and thereby predicting which one is more stable which complex is more stable okay so remember that okay so it was very simple i hope it is very clear to all of you again i repeat and one more thing this energy this degenerate orbital in absence of ligand this will be the lowest 
because I have some spacious space issues I have drawn it up but remember that this will always have the least energy even less than that so if it is an energy diagram this should have come down okay so this would be over here okay then energy of EG okay then you will have this and then you will have your T2G okay so always your degenerate orbital in absence of the ligand will have the least energy okay so just remember that again I repeat you will have degenerate orbital when ligands are approaching you will have energy that is rising to give you the degenerate orbital in the crystal field as soon as the ligands start putting electrons okay into the d orbital it will split into two in tetrahedral the eg will have lower energy and t2g will have higher energy towards eg you will always have the 60 percent that is 0.6 delta t or 60 q and towards t2g you will have the 40 percent that is 0.4 delta t or 4 dq the total difference will be delta t 1 delta t or it is going to be 10 dq is this clear okay and in tetrahedral complex why this splitting okay because in this this orbital experience least repulsion while this orbital experience more repulsion therefore they will have higher energy okay so once you understand this then we will see how to fill electrons in octahedral and tetrahedral based on the spectrochemical series that is if you have a strong fill ligand or a weak fill ligand how will you fill electrons in this orbitals okay that is octahedral and tetrahedral splitting orbitals okay we will see this in the next class see you soon in the meanwhile thank you